book of James chapter 3. I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 12. Because that is where we are going to base our sermon in the form of my exposition. I also understand that on Friday we did an exposition of the book of James. I don't know how coincidental this was. And I am sure that the speaker might have mentioned in passing James chapter 3. And then also we will read Proverbs 18 verse 21. James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. And this is what the word of God says. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When you, put in, when you put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, their tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great bosses. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. spark. The tank also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and, and, it's, and, it's itself, and is itself set on fire by hell. Verse 7, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures have been tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But also human being can, can, can tame, but no human being can tame the tongue, sorry. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's image, likeness, sorry. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Proverbs 18, verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of sharing your word this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that you invite us, O oh Lord, to break bread, O oh God, in the form of listening to your word. We pray that, Lord, as we journey with this dear brethren, we are all anxiously waiting for you. Will you speak to us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're talking about the tongue. A very powerful organ in the human body. Powerful to the extent that it connects us with one another. In the form of communication. Every parent, every parent, now I'm talking about biological parent, every parent will rejoice when they see their child start to speak. Why? Because they know that now they can be able to communicate with their own child. And that's the same case even to us. When we speak, we are communicating. We are speaking to one another. When whatever I'm doing right now, I'm making use of the organ called the tongue. And we think you are able to hear me clearly or not so clearly. And that is why you want to pull tell me, sorry I haven't heard you well. Because they desire you to use your tongue properly so that they are able to hear you of what you're saying. But not only it is so, have you ever walked across the street and you heard these guys who are saying, me a so, me a so, me a so. Of course it's the greatest scam I've ever seen in town. Because when I scare me a so, me a so, can you go in the ambil? Mia so, Mia, Mia so, Mia. You only Mia touch. <laughs> that that scam is in Nairobi. For those who have walked through the streets of Nairobi. Have you ever walked through and someone brings you a product 
and they convinced you to buy it. Ushe ni nwa kitoko kwa wapangia? Eh? Of course I'm not saying for those who are mine, I'm just not saying for those who are mine. Those people who have convincing power have learned to use their attack. For sure, they have learned to utilize the power in the tank. And I know the citadels will be living here and they will start applying for jobs. And they will be called for interviews. They will need to convince the potential employer to bring them on board. And that comes now, beside all the qualifications, the tank. How are you going to communicate to the employer? The tank has got immense, incredible, convincing power. But we shall also look at the other side as well as we proceed. Now, having talked about the goodness and the side in which that we may make use and the potential that lies in the tank, every good thing sometimes is associated with bad things, isn't it? There are, I know we are talking about the power of the tongue, and there are certain teachings that are not consistent with scripture that are being used to manipulate and talk about this subject or the power of the tongue. And when the Christian Union asked me to, the exec asked me to consider speaking about this subject, and thank you for inviting me, I was really thinking, wondering, yes, it is not a so wide subject, but yes, yet it's also sometimes misused as well. And some of the, there are two kinds of teachings that I know that are being used to propagate the power of the tongue in a negative way. And one is the so-called the name it and claim it gospel. You know, have you ever heard people say, whatever you, your mouth pronounce, it shall be so, isn't it? You've heard of this teaching called command your morning? Oh yes, command your morning. Now, to whom does the day belong to? You or God? Psalm 74 says, the day is yours and the night is yours, O Lord. Command your morning and it will be so. The only authority that God has given us is the authority to pray for our day, isn't it? And that's what I say is that our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, give us this day our daily. You are just praying for it. You know, there is even this teaching that says, tell yourself you are rich and you shall be. I declare you guys are rich, 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 rich. Okay, some of you must give him the word. But also they declare and decree. I declare that all of you are blessed. And it shall be. But also there is even the prosperity and prophetic gospel. Where we say we receive blessings from the utterances of the men of God. Yes, indeed, when people also bless us, yes they do, but sometimes we exaggerate that as well. You know, whatever the man of God ideally tells us, because he has declared it with his tongue, we find people lining up in a line, all of them tapping to the blessings of the man of God. Who blessed his people? God or the, or the man of God? Mukitoa, miatano, mungu anaona. He will give you 5,000. I have been bumping into some TV stations. And the kind of someone that I preach there, oh, may, may the Lord just come. <laughs> because 
the preacher is saying, oh yeah, I'm just waiting. You know, I'm going to make a green billy. I will pray for you. So right now, you know. You know, they say that, uh, you know, they say that if you don't bless, if you don't, uh, uh, if you if you give me 2,000, I am praying for you. If you give me 500, I will pray for you a lesser prayer. If you give me 5,000, I will pray for you more. So the pastor graduates from 500, now I end up what? Well, you 1,000. Well, you 1,500. Well, you 2,000. They're like, why? He keeps taking me back to those channels so that he enjoys me. Because he just knows that I don't like watching. Now, these kind of teachings have mastered the use of the tongue in a negative way. Because number one, there are three things that I find contradictory to those kind of teachings. Number one, they assert God's sovereignty over man's life. It is about that man is equally powerful as God. If you can command the day, see you are God. Am I? The only being that says things and they come to be is God. It asserts God's sovereignty. And we also now become a sovereign and take ourselves as sovereign as God. But number two, it promotes laziness and kills reasoning. You know you are told when you, when you deposit 300 shillings, you will get 3,000. Sure. See, you come a Am I? But also it even kills reasoning. Reasoning will just tell you that, my friend, it doesn't matter whether you, whether, you, whether you pray or not pray, as long as you have not worked, you will not eat. See no question? Doesn't matter how many blessings the man of God will give you. If you don't work, you will not eat. You know, you know, you say, oh yeah, I prayed in the field so powerfully, the man of God spoke to us, so I'll just walk to that exam room, and I will show you fire. can do it. No. These are not good things to share. So let us go to Proverbs 18, verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue can give life, can also give death. And this is not really literal, per se. Because life here means that the tongue can, can build up someone else's life through moral encouragement, or when you speak words of affirmation to them. You lighten up their joy. You give them hope that when I look at you and tell you, my sister, for you, I have seen great potential in your life. I can't wait to see your employer. You know, that word, you have really encouraged that person, isn't it? You have given them hope. You have affirmed them. When I come here and say that for sure, and this one is, I mean it, I actually wanted to say it. I really like the choir ministry here. Those people, they bless me. When I just come here and sit and listen to them as they sing, ah, now the Lord bless them. The tongue can really give life. It can really give life to people. Through your words of affirmation. Don't be mean with your words. You know, you have seen someone, they have done well. They just said, oh! Gajaripo lakini? Badu, 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 kido. Words of moral encouragement and speak words of affirmation to them. Just look for the small bit, the small. You know, even if you know this person is off the boat. Like now, for example, when someone comes here and they lead us in a song on Rona Tapisa, no one One On Friday I was in another service and then a brother sang, sang, sang so well, but he was off key. Then you know, the praise and worship to what they did. They sang with him. They were encouraged. Other members of the choir, they were encouraged. 
But also the tongue gives light in the form of sharing the gospel and the good news to them that do not believe in Christ. God has given you the tongue so that you may declare the truth that is found in the word of God. Praise the Lord. And death here because the tongue has the power of life and death. Death doesn't necessarily really mean that when you tell me that I will die, I will die. Unless it is the day that the Lord has destined it, that I will die, I will die. But death ritual here means that when you give that heartbreaking answer to someone, wherever you want to be joy, or you ask me whether I can support you financially, and then I tell you I'm not in a good position, and then you tell me, well, well, you know, walk up in the joy. Or you find someone speaking in a place, and then after that you tell them, oh, yeah, when you go to be up? Yeah, you be lucky. I mean, you need first to tell me that, oh, yes, you did? Well, but if you can improve somewhere like this here, like that, that would be good. Or sometimes even using demoralizing words. You're always stupid. Well, 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 that's a good pastor. You remember what Nathaniel said? Can anything good come out, come out of? Nathaniel, what are you doing? Yeah, bam. Bam. Well, one day. My mother told me, you know, we were walking with her. And I had one man friend who was a pastor in the village. And he was praying so fast. Beside that she. Then I asked my brother and told him, hey, Mom, why did that man pray so long? Um, because, uh, because uh, he's born again. He's born again. He's born again. He's born again. Me. My dad used to tell me that when you're under Kanisa, it's not a potea idea. So, who says potea idea? <laughs> and I know my mom telling me this, but you know, we don't do our degree in our own Like you don't get a new son, the degree come in. That word kept me. Ukijaribu sana, unakona degree kama? Kama ya. Unaona na omba na amesoma? Waja tukona kama ata wewe. Ukiwa umesoma na ima sumo ya hapa, yote ukiwa umemaliza shule, kama unakona mkoka. And sure, the Lord met me as a student. You know, sometimes you can also even use some demeaning statement. You are just in a meeting, you never encourage people. When people are talking about, oh, how that service was good, you just hear that, you just say, yeah, guys, I like what you're saying, but for me... <laughs> Sometimes, death, even in this context, in Proverbs 18, verse 21, may mean breaking of a relationship. Or marriages. Or friendships. Sometimes just because of our careless use of words, we break our relationships, we break our, our marriages, we break our friendships. Have you found friends who have divided away because they, they because of what our that their friends say? They is scared so and so and say what? Nani ya masango? Nani? Hacha nani? Mimi na yeye? But as I have talked about the power of life and death, that is what we need. Giving that, lighting up the life of someone through encouragement and speaking what's on the conversation, but also sharing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the other side, in giving that heartbreaking response, demoralizing words, discouragement, and abusive words and demeaning. And let me tell you time. And let us just read the book of James chapter 3. I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 12. Because that is where we are going to place our sermon in the form of my exposition. 
I also understand that on Friday we did an exposition of the book of James. I don't know how coincidental this was. And I am sure as the speaker might have mentioned uh, in passing James chapter 3. And then also we will read Proverbs 18, verse 21. James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. And this is what the word of God says. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When you put, in, when you put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, their tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great bosses. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small part, spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and, and, it's, and it's itself and is itself set on fire by hell. Verse 7, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures have been tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But also human being can, can, can tame, but no human being can tame the tongue, sorry. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's image, likeness, sorry. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine?
That one completely shattered their script as well. And why we need to understand that we may use, we use our tongue to give life to others is because Proverbs 15 verse 4 says, the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. The soothing tongue is a tree of life. With it we give hope, with it you build up, with it we encourage. But a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. But secondly, besides us using the power of the tongue to give life, so, so we may use the power of the tongue to defend our faith. Using the power of the tongue. In sharing the truth with others, them that we interact closely with, using the power of the tongue to defend it. There is an array of counterattacks towards our faith. Use your tongue to defend it. Because First Peter chapter 3, verse 15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Them that are good communicators, use your prowess in speaking to defend the faith. Then lastly, to use the power of a tongue is that we may use the power of a tongue to express kindness and grace to others. To express kindness. Using of the courteous words to respond to others. Colossians 4, verse 6 says, Let your conversation be always full of grace. Season with salt. So that you may know how to answer everyone. Using the power of a tongue to express kindness and grace to others. Giving them light, giving them hope, and giving them the truth that comes from God's word. Brethren, therefore, as we conclude, the tongue is a small organ in the body, yet with full potential. It is a world of evil. It can either be the instrument of salvation or the instrument of destruction. Remember, your words may either build or destroy someone else's life. And I give us a challenge. Let no one accuse you of speaking recklessly to them, of breaking their hearts in what you have said. But as we have spoken about this, and as I have finally alluded, it is not possible to control our tongue by ourselves. It is not possible. Unless we have God in us, therefore we shall be able to control our time. And I wonder, the singer, I don't know if it's Betty Minor or Betty Byron saying, Maneno, Yaki, Once again, Could that be your desire as an individual? That your words, the words that proceed from your mouth, that may they be controlled by the Lord? Do you have such a desire? Do you have such a prayer? That whatever you speak, that God will help you to control it. Let's go down as we pray. Our Father and our God, this is our desire. The word that proceeds out of the mouth that you've given to us, O oh Lord, that may they be controlled by you. We so much desire our Father and our God that you will preserve us, O oh God, and give us the authority and the power to control our tongue, O oh God. Because the scripture says that no human being can be able to tell it. But we know that to us who are in you, O oh Lord, you have given us power and authority, O oh King of all the glory. And that power and authority comes with it, O oh God, granting us, O oh God, the will and the desire to control the tank. We pray that, Lord, you may help us, our Father and our God, to control our tongues, O oh God. 
because in need you have respected through your word as a restless evil, full of deadly poison, as fire. Oh God, it has immense potential. All of it bringing destruction, but also has immense potential, even bringing hope and giving life to them that need it, oh God. In Jesus' name.